How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donnie here again. This time we're going to take a look at covalent bonding and orbital overlap. So our objectives will be to describe bonding between atoms in terms of orbital overlap. So here we go. So orbital overlap, what is that? So the valence shell electron pair repulsion model predicts the shapes well for molecules, but you know what it doesn't do? It doesn't explain why atoms bond. It can say what they're going to look like when they're bonded, but it doesn't say why are they bonding. So the valence bond theory is the combination of Lewis's electron pair bonding and atomic orbital. So we're going to put in some of this stuff together. So when a valence atomic orbital of one atom merges and overlaps with another, so these two electrons of opposite spin share that space where they overlap, where these atoms are overlapping, those unpaired electrons are hanging out there together. So electrons are being shared this way. So if we take a look at a simple example of a hydrogen molecule, they each have one electron. And what you can do is, hey, they want to fill that S orbital. They want that to be full. Well, if they overlap, they're sharing that one electron they have with the other atom and the other atoms reciprocating and sharing its electron. So it's like they're sharing a total of two electrons. So same thing with like HCl, we can see that chlorine has this unpaired electron in the P subshell uh, and hydrogen has an unpaired electron in the S subshell. So they can overlap and share those unpaired electrons. So now this chlorine is kind of sharing its one and kind of receiving the one from the hydrogen. So they're sharing these electrons so that they both have this full orbital. So if we take a look at bond distance and energy, uh, it also helps explain why atoms bond. So let's start right here where these two atoms are separated, right? So they're at a certain amount of energy. As they get closer, the energy is going to drop because nuclei are attracted to the electrons in the other atom, right? So this positive nucleus is being attracted to the negative electrons that that other atom has and then vice versa. The other atom's positive nucleus is being attracted to the negative electrons in the other atom. Now these electrons repel each other and these nuclei repel each other, but right now the attraction is greater than the repulsion. So they're going to start to come together and those orbitals are going to start to overlap and we're going to find this minimum uh, distance where the attractive and repulsive forces are balanced. So there's going to be like this equilibrium where, you know, the positive nucleus is being attracted to the other atoms electrons but equally repelled from the other one's nucleus. So there's this kind of uh, you know, equilibrium found. If we were to force those atoms closer together, the repulsive forces would increase to the point that, you know, th that's not gonna be good, right? They're gonna repel each other. Those nuclei are now getting so close to each other that they're forcing each other apart. So the energy for that is gonna go up. So the low point right here is gonna be what we call the bond distance. So the bond length is the distance where the attractive forces between the nuclei and the electrons are balanced by the repulsive forces, you know, between the electron and electron interactions as well as the nucleus-nucleus interactions. So that low point for energy is like the natural stable state and we call that the bond length because that's how you're gonna find them. So summarize, can you describe bonding between atoms in terms of orbital overlap? I hope so. If not, eh, you know, too bad for you, I guess. Goodbye.